I want to dive into a little bit about the V4 itself and why are they doing this? So if you're if you're not following the technical side of MotoGP hyper closely, you might be a little confused to say why why does it matter? Why does an inline four matter versus a V4? So right now everybody runs a V4 except Yamaha. Yamaha's ran an inline four for ages. Their inline four is a cross plane crankshaft, just like the R1 is. So you do get a non screamer firing order. Yeah, it emulates a V4. Kind of emulates a V4 as close as it can, yeah. um, while staying somewhat balanced. Um, so they're doing kind of as best as they can with the firing order they have to get that behavior of a big bang. Um, but it can only go so far. It's never quite the same. But that said, why would they go to a V4? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The in MotoGP, Right now, the aerodynamics is such a massive factor in the behavior of the bike and the speed of the bike and everything else that that is now taking a higher order precedence, precedence than other factors. So if you think of the frontal area of a bike, so imagine a bike coming straight at you and then line four is going to be wider because all four cylinders in a row. V4 is literally half as wide, not wide, but ballpark half as wide. Let's them narrow up everything and give them more space for appendages, essentially, for the arrow, right? All right, so there's that factor of it. The other factor of it is, now, if you think about a bike in profile, so you're looking at it from the side, if I made the bike, if I made the engine narrower in the front, I can also now drop the engine lower into the chassis and not have ground clearance issues as I lean left to right. What that does, if you think about the bike in profile, is now the whole engine inside the frame sits lower down, and we're not talking inches, but we could be talking up to an inch or more, right? It's not, you know, falling on the ground, but it's, it's pretty low. That gives them more flexibility with where the counter shaft sprocket is. And with the Michelin tires, rear grip is such an important thing on these bikes. And typically, if you design a modern bike, you know, the correct way, a slightly lower swing arm pivot is going to give you more traction on the rear tire. Well, you can only get so low with it if your countershaft sprocket is in a fixed height. So the countershaft sprocket also has to come down slightly to allow you to run a lower, flatter swing arm to get more grip. So in theory, they should get a little bit more grip. It's a little bit narrower. So the whole bike is a little bit more aerodynamic from the front. Uh, it also has a shorter or compact crankshaft, which has a lower moment of inertia. So it's turning from side to side, I imagine an inline four crank, right? Mm -hmm. It has to travel. You have all these spinning forces. And I want to think, just like mm -hmm. I'm not the engineer, that there's going to like all sorts of crazy stresses on a wide, long crank, where if the crank is effectively half as long, it would, I would think, take less energy for it to get to turn from left to right as opposed to the big long thing. Is that what we're talking about with moment of inertia? Yeah, so moment of inertia is a, a fixed feature of any object, meaning the, the fact that it's spinning doesn't change its moment of inertia. It might change other inertias like gyroscopic forces, but the moment of inertia is literally just the geometry of the part and, and then the axis you're rotating. This is why lighter wheels make such a big difference. It's not so much the, like the unsprung or sprung mass, but it's moment of inertia because it takes less energy to spin them up, slow them down, and get them to change direction. That's, uh, yes, so somewhat to change the direction, correct. The, so if you think about moment of inertia is basically the, it's a measurement of uh, the amount of uh, effort it's going to take to rotate something. So if you take a cylinder, right, if you measure the axis of the cylinder and rotate it, it has a low moment of inertia, okay? Usually because it's, if it's really tight around the axis. But now if you take a crankshaft, which is long, but you spin it from the center, so it's going the long way around, has a very high moment of inertia. Now, in an engine, in a motorcycle, this thing's sitting in the bike and you're cranked over on the left side. It's very stable once it gets into position because of the moment of inertia, so it doesn't want to change rotation, doesn't want to rotate left to right. This is why the Yamaha M1 was always known for being this sweet handling bike is because once it's leaned over, it feels very, very stable and smooth, and it kind of eats up imperfections and just feels really buttery smooth through a corner. Whereas an inline four with a much narrower right, crank, right. sorry, a V4, thank you. Um, a V4 with a narrower crank, when it's leaned over, it's more likely to be upset by changes in input or track features, things like that. 
So it isn't going to feel as smooth and arcing and, and uh, planted as an inline four. The balance of that, though, is now the inline four, because it's this narrow compact thing, can flick more easily left to right around its axis. Or is it a V4? The V4. Sorry, I keep saying that wrong. V4. <laughs> yeah. The V4 crank is going to be shorter, so it's allowing it to flick left to right more easily. And that's, I believe that's why they say, oh, it's a better bike for fighting with other bikes with. Because it's more nimble. It can You can kind of juke into a corner late and still make it to the apex. You're not fighting this big, long moment to get it through the corner. So there, there's all of these reasons why they're moving to this V4. Um, some, of the, some of the reasons that I've heard people say, the only reason I wanted to go over that is I, I've heard some people say things about V4s that are just not actually true. And it's like, that's not why they're actually- Yeah, let's go over that because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding over V4s. Mm -hmm. um, we, they've been around in motorcycles forever. Honda basically brought them to market in the 80s with some of the greatest motorcycles. And then they're extremely expensive to make because you have to make two of everything. Aprilia kind of solved the problem by taking the front jug and basically rotating 180 degrees, putting it on the back. So you, you have two chains that are spinning. So they're complicated, they're expensive, they're, they're more moving parts. Um, from my perspective as primarily a street riding guy, I love V4s because they're charming to ride. Mm -hmm. But I've heard people say all sorts of things about V4s that even despite my affection for them, I'm like, Mm, I don't think, I don't think that's necessarily the case. Now, the to, to that point, because imagine it's the V, right? The problem with the V4 is a packaging issue. Now I've got cylinders in the front, cylinders in the back, and I've got exhaust coming out both of them. And if you think about how packaged a motorcycle is, where the heck do you put all that stuff? And then the inbox, sorry, the inbox, the airbox is going to be smaller typically because it's compromised on shape as well. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why V4 is a downside. And then from a production perspective, yeah, it's more expensive, right? It's now instead of two long cams, it's four cams in a typical dual overhead cam engine. Um, lots of other parts and components needed just to deal with it. Uh, and oftentimes they're heavier than an equivalent inline four. Yeah, there's going to be more material because, more yeah, yeah, you know, you think about like an inline four is probably one of the cheapest engines to make. Um, Honda, uh, you know, we're seeing Honda doing a lot of parallel twins uh, because they're even cheaper to make than an inline four, right? You're, they're just making two big giant pistons to get the same thing. And there's lots of advantages to that. But a, a parallel twin is an incredibly cost-effective mm -hmm. engine to make. And we can see that when we go back to like your old Triumphs yep. and BSAs and stuff like that. That's the first thing you made. A B-twin was really expensive because you had to make two of everything. Yep. For, for the same reason. But I've heard other people say that a V4 has more power. It, and it, and it, intrinsically, it does not have more power, right? A thousand cc engine is a thousand cc engine. Now they're not all created equal, right? Some people tune better, some people have better fuel management. There's all re kinds of reasons why. Yeah. One valve overlap and valve size. There's like yeah. a billion factors. A lot of design it. issues. Now the, the, the only, the argument I have heard for why a V4 would should be more powerful is because on, in an inline four, the two center cylinders tend to get hotter than the two outside cylinders. So now you're dealing with temperature changes. Well, you have the same problem, if not worse, on a V4. Because your back pistons. Because your back ones are stuffed in there and they're getting cooled, but not nearly as as well as they could be if it was had more more exposure to other other surface areas. So there's a lot of reasons why people say it behaves a certain way. One of them that I hear is, oh, well, a, a V4 makes more torque. Well, again, it doesn't, in, it, in and of itself, doesn't make more torque. But what they're probably referring to is the fact that a 90 degree V4, the firing order is, lends itself to a, a better spread of, of uh, torque pulses. Meaning when you get the hits of power as the crank rotates, you, your tire has a better chance of finding grip and translating that torque into actual movement and pushing you forward down the road. Whereas in inline four, a typical screamer engine has even firing orders. We talked about this last time. Uh, it tends to break traction and then keep spinning. It's hard for it to regain. But even when you do a cross plane, like they've done the R1, that helps. It does help it get closer to that big bang style but it still doesn't have nearly the flexibility that in a V4 would have. It's like a 90 degree. 
uh, in terms of the pulses that are getting to the tire. So a lot of times the V4, it isn't necessarily a torquier engine by its very nature, but the way it feels to the rider can feel that way because you do get more of a kind of a grunt out of corners because it finds grip better. 